Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. In this episode, I'm going to show you how you can use Mesh Mixer to remove pre-supports from a model. Alright, let's get started. So before I get into the actual tutorial, I just wanted to say thank you. The channel has grown like crazy over the past few weeks and the Facebook group is growing and I've gotten a lot of really great comments and, and some positive feedback and just in general, the support has been awesome. So I wanted to say thank you. I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. But let's talk about, um, well, let's talk about this model first. Uh, this is one of the models available from the Printing Was Ever On. This is a model in their welcome pack. If you don't know the Patreon, definitely check them out. You can find a link in the description down below. Alright, so let's talk about why you would want to remove pre-supports. So there are basically three reasons in my mind that you would want to remove them. First is that you can, uh, you know, with relative certainty, you can say that the pre-supports are a problem, they're causing issues, they weren't put in correctly, um, and it could be in one spot, it could be the entire model, it could be that whoever created the pre-supports created them for a very specific printer or resin, and they didn't really leave a whole lot of uh, variance there for different printers and different resins. Uh, the next would be if you wanted to print on uh, something like FDM, and you can't use these pre-supports supports. Uh, the last one would be if you want to print in a different orientation or maybe you want to edit this model slightly and you want to take these uh, the pre-supports off so that you can do that and, and put it in a different orientation or maybe put it with a different model or do your own kind of kit bashing thing. So in those situations it's really helpful to know how to remove these supports and the easiest way to do that is to bring it into Mesh Mixer and then highlight the model. Uh, I'm just going to spin around here so you can see. Now, I've never had pre-supports, uh, issues with any pre-supports from any of the Patreons I've supported. Occasionally, I've had some problems with um, pre-supports that have been done on Thingiverse files. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out real quick. I, I'm not saying that you're going to find a ton of issues with pre-supports, but it, it can happen. So highlight the model and then go over to edit. Then you're going to go to separate shells. And depending on how many supports, this can take uh, a few minutes. It can take quite a long time. So prepare for potentially a good wait. Okay, so through the power of editing, mine is done instantly. So now we're gonna go up to, this window here is called the object browser. Basically, it's just giving you a, a view of everything that's contained within the scene right now or everything you have open in Mesh Mixer. So if for whatever reason this window does not pop up or if you close it like I always do, you can just go to view and then go to show object browser and it'll pop right back up. So from here, what you can do is you can click through and see what gets highlighted over here on the right. You can see how things are turning a lighter gray color when they're getting highlighted. What you're looking for is, luckily for us, it's the top shell here, you're looking for the actual model and not the supports themselves. So once you highlight that model, you can go over to edit, then hit transform, and then those uh, directional arrows will pop up so you can move the model around. And I'm just going to move it out of the way here, just to show that there's uh, nothing stuck on the model, there's no other pieces, it's all contained into one part, and it's been removed from these pre-supports. So we're going to hit accept, and now from here, you're basically done. If you want to, uh, a good practice I always recommend you do is hit align and bring this back down onto the build plate just so that the next program you bring it into, whether it's gonna be uh, printing an FDM, so you bring it into like Cura or Prusa Slicer or something like that. Um, in the next program you bring it into, it will be sitting on the build plate. You can hit accept, and then from there you can go up to file, and then from there just go down to export, and you can call it whatever you want. And if you don't know by now, my standard practice is always to save it to the desktop so I can find it easily and organize it from there. So occasionally when you go to export a model, you'll get this message. And basically it's Mesh Mixer saying that it identified some errors with the model and it wants to make you aware of them so you can fix them or so that you are saving the model knowing that it may have these, these issues. Um, I wouldn't recommend worrying too much about this. Uh, what I would recommend doing is that you export the model and then bring it into your slicer. And if your slicer identifies problems or if you can identify very obvious issues with the model, then you know that it needs to be repaired. But the, the difference between Mesh Mixer and a slicer is that Mesh Mixer is not necessarily made for 3D printing, so it may look for things that aren't going to affect a 3D print versus a slicer won't. It'll know what uh, what your 3D printer should and shouldn't be able to handle and what may actually cause a problem. So I wouldn't worry about a model having errors until you bring it into your slicer and you can either see them or it identifies them. So go ahead and hit continue and then uh, export the model out. And then you can bring it in your slicer and confirm that all the pre-supports have been removed. And like I said, this process will work for both resin and FDM printing. Just make sure that when you export it from Mesh Mixer, you're exporting as an STL file. 
All right, so I hope you found this one helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel grow, and like I said, it means a lot to me. So uh, if you like the work that I'm doing here and you want to support the channel, you can find links to my Patreon down below. And otherwise, hope you found this one helpful, and let's go print something.